Hello everyone, welcome aboard. We have a more somber video for you today. We're gonna go over what's going on in the North Atlantic right now and the search for the Ocean Gate submersible. I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna make this video because I'm not a submariner and I'm also not even that much of a diver, but there's a lot of information going on out there and a lot of them are just news clips that are very short. So I wanted to make this video trying to compile everything that's been said into one easy to understand video. First, going over the background of what's happened talking about the construction of the vessel and the allegations that a lot of it was from a hardware store, how the search and rescue team is looking for this vessel, and finally why I think that there is still hope that they can find it. All this information has been compiled by a large number of news organizations, and I have skimmed through all of them to try to give the best representation of what is going on currently in the North Atlantic. But for that reason, keep in mind, things are always changing and new information is coming out every day. At the time of this video, there is about 30 hours left in a 96 hour air reserve. It is now Tuesday night and the vessel went missing Sunday morning when they dropped it in the water at 6 a.m. Eastern time. The vessel was designed as an exploration vessel and a tourism opportunity for people to go down and see the wreck of the Titanic. It was built by Ocean Gate and from their website here, you can see that it is about the size of a minivan. It is constructed with a tube of carbon fiber and then the outer caps of the tube are titanium with a viewing window in one side. Old reports from this website state that it could cost you $250,000 to take a ride in this submersible down to the Titanic. And while we're going over what the submersible is, let me talk about why they call it a submersible and not a submarine. This submersible in the way that it functions going underwater is more similar to a hot air balloon. It has props and motors that can kind of direct it in terms of its angle and its pitch and its yaw, it doesn't actually propel itself on its trajectory. It just changes sort of the way it's going. What they do is they lower it into the water and they surf different currents to help position the vessel near the Titanic. The reason that this is so important is that it doesn't communicate on its own. And what that means is that it doesn't have a very good idea of where it is in the water just based off the submersible itself or when you're in the submersible. What it does instead is it has a conversation with the ship above, which knows its position, and then the ship above relays that position back down to the submersible, and then they're able to kind of direct it towards the Titanic. The reason for this is because radio waves and GPS don't work underwater. So what they're doing is they're using a type of sonar or a way to send sound down to the submersible, and it then has a system on it which can translate those noises into a text, and you're able to read that text and determine, all right, we're 100 meters from the Titanic in this direction, we're off by this far, and that is the communication that they have seemed to lost with the submersible. However, it goes to show that since they don't know where the submersible is, it's also likely that they lost it on their own tracking up at the ship. Now, one of the big aspects of this whole operation is the location of the Titanic. It is located at 12,500 feet deep of water. Now, that is a huge amount of water compared to what normal submarines go down to. A normal Navy submarine usually only operates between 1,500 and 2,000 feet of water, which just really gives you an idea of how much pressure and how complicated getting vessels down to this depth is. The Titanic is located in this area right here, which is about 400 nautical miles south of Newfoundland and about in the middle of its original trip. Now, the reason this is so important as a factor is because 400 nautical miles by sea on a boat can take anywhere from 20 hours to 40 hours, depending on how fast you're moving. Most boats will probably do it in around 40 hours. So just to get equipment out there, it takes a number of days. Now to give you a better idea of what the submersible looks like, you can see it here along with a bunch of other pictures from Google. It has these little props that are able to propel it a fair amount, but it doesn't actually really handle on its own. So that's why it works more like a hot air balloon where it transitions between different currents to help its direction. And then if we watch this video here, we can see more in depth of how the submersible is built. An experimental submersible vessel that has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and could result in physical injury, disability, emotional trauma, or death. So this guy right here is just reading the waiver. It is my impression that OceanGate actually was pretty forward in the danger that it would take to get down to the Titanic. And they actually had training for everyone on board and made sure that everyone understood the trip that they're about to go on. Where do I sign? 
David Poe here, the music's very dramatic in this video. David Poe here, he went on this trip and he's a CBS correspondent. And so if you've been seeing him on the news recently, it's because he's sort of the current resident expert of someone that actually did this trip and is familiar with the vessel. He actually says a few different things. He initially states to a lot of people how well he professional he thought the whole trip was and how it was coordinated and how they train you. And then he goes on, which is what the topic of this video is more about, how the vessel itself wasn't up to maybe standards that he would have expected. We only have one button, that's it. It should be like an elevator. I couldn't help noticing how many pieces of this sub seemed improvised. This is sort of where the story of the fact that people think this thing was built at an Ace or a Home Depot because he sees a lot of this stuff that looks like fixtures that he would be able to purchase himself. I understand the fear in that. I would imagine, or I would like to see if I was spending this kind of money or going on this kind of trip, that it seemed a little more custom and a little more thought through. I'm not saying that these parts couldn't do what they were designed to do. The vessel had made the trip a number of times before this. This is just sort of one of the big talking points that's currently going on in the media. You can use these off the shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. Yeah, so Camper World doesn't necessarily instill a ton of confidence. I'm not familiar with Camper World or if they're specializing in submarine construction, but you can see where this sort of narrative is starting to come from. Run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> so David here wasn't super stoked to see that the whole thing was run off an Xbox controller or a game controller. I understand his surprise by that. I do, however, think that that's probably not as uncommon as people are making it seem. I know that that's a talking point in a lot of the media right now is that it was run off a game controller. I know that a lot of engineers or people who build things use parts that already exist. For example, a game controller because they're good at what they do and they've been manufactured well, so they can trust them to control the vessel. I don't, however, disagree that it doesn't instill a lot of confidence. And then the video just goes on to show that it was jerry-rigged and then they they show people's tweets which is one of my pet peeves at the new media nowadays it just kind of shows random people's tweets so before we go on and talk about the search let's go over a couple more of the specifications of this vessel here you can see them on the right side of the screen the vessel has a top speed of three knots which is more what i meant when i said that they have to traverse currents because currents can be up to six to eight knots even higher than that as you can see it has four electric thrusters which help operate the vessel and move it in the direction it needs to go. And then the important thing for, unfortunately, this video is its life support system. So it has 96 hours for five crew members, and there are five people down there now. According to David, who was a gentleman we just saw, it has seven different ways of getting up to the surface on its own, but he only mentioned three of them, and the three of them are water being pumped out of ballast tanks to help raise the vessel, then there's airbags that can actually be manually inflated even if the boat submersibles. Power goes out, which is what everyone's searching for and hoping to see on the water. The third is actually those thrusters itself helping trying to thrust it back up to the surface, which I'm under the impression is the normal way that they get back to the surface is between the ballast and the thrusting. So with that, let's talk a little bit about the search, why they're searching in the air, on the surface of the water, and then how they're also searching down on the seafloor. Okay, so this gentleman here is CBS's correspondent with the Pentagon, and he goes over in pretty good detail what's being done about trying to find the submersible. First, both the U.S. and the Canadians either have launched or are ready to launch C-130 Hercules. These are four-engine aircraft designed specifically for long-range, long-endurance patrols. So, they're able so these planes, I'll show you right here really quickly, they're able to run much longer patterns than helicopters are, and they can be out there and do patterns over the ocean for an entire day is they're searching a grid pattern in the area that they know that the submersible went down. And that is a really big thing in the search for the sub, is that most searches, they don't actually know where they're supposed to be looking. In this case, they do. So if that submersible is able to make its way back to the surface, then they'll be able to tell. And they'll be able to see it using cameras, infrared, all different kinds of means. And so with these scouring the surface, if the submersible is up, they should be able to find it. Canada has also launched a P-8 Poseidon. Brian mentioned this is a submarine hunter, and that's what its specialty is. So let's take a look at the P-8 Poseidon now. Okay, so this is the P-8 Poseidon. 
I'm not familiar with this, I've never seen one before, but you can see the technical specifications here show that it's able to carry a total of 129 sono buoys. What those are is they're buoys that they can drop that will ping the water and they will listen. I think they do both. I think they do two things. They do active and passive acoustic detention. What active is, is it pings and it waits for a response back to see if there's anything down there. And passive means that it's just listening. So it's, if you hear any noise in the water, it'll detect it. The reason this is so important is because submarines are particularly loud. Submersibles, I would imagine, are also equally loud. Underwater, sound travels much differently and farther than it does on land. So on land, if you yell, you can hear it for maybe a couple hundred yards if you yell really loud. But in the water, which is what we see with whales, dolphins, boats, the sound travels very far distances. So the reason for that is because the water is more solid than the air. So by putting these sonar buoys down, they can actually listen, and if any sound is coming from the submersible, whether that be it's the submersible's engines running, or it's people banging on the actual submersible itself, they should be able to pick that up. And in fact, as of 12 minutes ago, me making this video, they did hear banging sounds according to certain search reports. Now, since this is brand new information, it is still coming out, and it appears to be unclear of how long they heard it for, or whether the banging was from the submersible, but it does seem like they are able to hear something, which makes me believe that they are still underwater. And if that is the case, then they have about 30 hours of air left at the time of this video. At the time it goes out, they may only have about 20 hours of air left. This is still a great thing because they have recovery mission possibilities. Navy and other military have provided certain equipment that is capable of picking things up out of the water or off the bottom. And they could very well be able to do this with a submersible. This submersible that the Navy has is highlighted right here, and it is called a Flyaway Deep Ocean Salvage System. It has the capacity to lift and recover large, bulky, and heavy undersea objects, like the small submersible. So it would be able to recover something like this, and if they are able to keep hearing these noises, they will be able to find the submersible. So that just about covers everything about the submersible itself and the recovery effort, but there is one last thing that I would like to point out, and that is in the CNN article here where it talks about who's on board, and it shows their faces, but I, I'm not going to. It also shows their names here, but the one that I want to point out, which is the last name on this list, is a French diver. The reason that stands out to me and is so important to me is because divers are familiar with the depths of the ocean, and they don't go down this deep all the time, but they will be familiar with how the sound travels, how it works, what they should be doing to conserve their air on this vessel, and how they can maximize their chances of being found. With that, I think they're in maybe the best shape they could be with the people they have on board for an opportunity at rescue. My thoughts and prayers are with everyone on board right now, as well as all the searchers looking to find this vessel. Maritime emergencies always hit very close to home. And I have faith that in the next coming day, hopefully, this video will be old news and we'll have a big headline tomorrow saying that they found them.